Hello, my name is Frank Cole. I'm the author of the Hash Brown Winter series and my newest book, The Guardians of Elijah's Fire, uh, just released about a month ago. And I am participating, it's my first time participating in Ride On Con, and I'm very, very excited. And we're going back to the basics, is what I was told. And so, uh, what I'm going to talk to you about is how to create, what is it? Building characters into real people. Uh, particularly with the middle grade novel. So I've written down some notes and uh, I'm going to refer to those right now. So what I want to do is um, we're going to look at three steps that you need to, need to use when you're assessing your characters to make sure that they're believable to the readers. And we'll talk in middle grade. Uh, number one. Assessing your characters and making sure that they have believable dialogue. So we'll talk about that in one second. It's assessing your character and making sure that they're having believable reactions to the situation. So everything that's happening in the story, uh, their reactions are believable. Um, All right, and this is probably pretty critical, in my opinion, to the, the character's believability. It's through their relationships. So those are our three, through dialogue, through their reactions to uh, the situations that they're faced with in the story, and through their relationships. Three, one, two, three. Um, okay, believable dialogue. First of all, I, you have to know your character's uh, age. And it seems like a simple, basic, Thing, but yeah, you might put on paper that the kid is 11 years old or 12 years old or whatever the age is. He might be in fifth grade or sixth grade or junior high. Um, but if the dialogue is, doesn't reflect that, then you're going to lose some readers. The way your character talks and, re and responds and the way how they sound is something that you have to look at and you have to take it take a step back from your writing and have somebody else read it and look at it yourself and say does this reader does this character sound like the age that I've set him up to be um, now let me add a little something something to that if your characters are say geniuses or they are Greek gods or whatever they're called they're uh, the uh, demigods or half gods or half ones or if they go to a wizarding school and the dialogue that they use there is going to have is going to be different than what a normal 11 12 13 year old kid would be speaking that's okay you're going to set that up in uh, in your story and and, and that's going to be understandable to the reader well for, let me let me give you an example when i was writing um my book the adventures of hash brown winners i wrote all these uh conversations between the main characters and whatnot. I thought they were funny and I was reading to other um, people and they thought they were funny and then I realized, wait, wait a second, who's my target audience? It's, it's fifth graders. It's fourth and fifth graders and third graders. It's that, that eight to 12 age group. And I realized that I had to change the way they were speaking because it wasn't believable. It got to look at the age and say, if barring any other weird circumstances that you created, with the story, does my kid sound like an 11 year old? For a kid, they want to be able to relate to that character. And so dialogue is, is huge. And so if you lose that character because, or lose that reader because your character is not believable in the way they speak, then you're making a big mistake. So number two, it's the reactions. How they react to the scenarios that you throw at them. The scenarios don't have to be realistic that the character is in. I mean, we're going to see all a, a myriad of different books and different scenarios and situations, and they don't have to be realistic at all. It's just you know, fancy, sci-fi, whatever the case is. But the reactions to those circumstances and those scenarios should be realistic. Uh, panic is the same if you're on another planet. Uh, there's still that believability uh, in that reaction. Or anger is an emotion that should be universal. Um, and writing for if you want your readers to relate to your character especially if they're reading about another 13 year old you want to be able to see okay uh, so and so at school got humiliated but they weren't they didn't react the way I would have reacted had I been humiliated 
and so I'm not going to relate to that character. Hope that makes sense. So the reactions need to be true no matter what the scenario is. Does that make any sense? You think so? Voice from this corner? Yes. But let me give you an example. Artemis Fowl, one of my favorite series. It's by uh, Eowyn Colfer, I think I said his name correctly. But this is a brilliant series. I just love it. And in it, there's a 12-year-old mas criminal mastermind. He's a genius. And the way he acts and, uh, and how he reacts to situations is a lot different than any normal 12-year-old kid. And that's fine. And I know it kind of contradicts everything I just said. But the rules were laid out where you, the reader understands that this is not your normal 12-year-old kid. But the norm is still, it still exists. So any other 12-year-old kid in this book is going to act like a 12-year-old kid. But Artemis, because he's different, because he's a genius and he's a criminal and he's trying to exploit the fairy underworld, he's going to act different. And the reader is going to be okay with that. Because the rules still exist of how a 12-year-old, normal 12-year-old should behave. As long as you're setting up the changes to the rule, and so the reader can read that and understand it, then you're fine. Um, but again, the rule still exists. Okay, finally, we're at number three. And we're talking about the importance of relationships uh, in your story. Think back to high school. Every high schooler, every junior high schooler, every elementary schooler, whatever the case is, they all rely on their friendships. Um, and if they don't have friends, they want friends. And they're and that drives their emotion. Why don't I have friends? Why don't why don't people like me? You know, and then they, you know, they want to be with their friends all the time. So in order to make your character, your main character, believable to the reader, there's got to be that element of friendship in the story. A friend, and I, I'll give you an example. I did this myself. My first book that I ever wrote, which will never be published, I don't think, unless I rewrite this thing dramatically. Uh, I wrote a book about this kid that endured all these situations on his own. And there was other people that showed up periodically through the story and maybe gave him advice and showed him the way to go, but he was on his own most of the time. And it was so boring because there was no dialogue. There was no interaction with somebody else. There was no one causing any contradiction to his behavior, you know? And that's why a friend, someone that can endure the situation along with your main character is so important. It makes great stories. Percy Jackson and Olympians, there's a whole bunch of, uh, the, the, the three main characters, Grover, Annabeth, and Percy, for the most part, that book contains all of them together, working together. And even though it's all written from Percy's perspective, from his point of view, those friendships, Grover and Annabeth, complete Percy. They make him a more believable character because of how he responds to Annabeth and how he reacts to what Grover says. If you want to make your character believable, you have to give him a friend. Give him someone or her someone to talk with and relate with, please. Um, I hope you got something out of this. I know I sure did. I learned a lot by trying to put this together and ripping my hair out and stressed because have you seen the lineup of authors that are that's here on Ride On Con? My goodness, these people are like my idols. I idolize them and they're on here somewhere in cyberspace right now talking to you and I can be mentioned in the same breath as they are. So thank you to for letting me be on here. I hope uh, if you have any questions, please, you can find me somehow. Let me know. I'd love to, to answer anything you have. Thank you. Bye-bye.